So, it's been a while since I've seen you. How have you been? Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty good. I did a little bit of traveling, but back in Darwin now. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a crazy little while. I know it's been it's been a little bit of time since we've been able to make our video. I know we've we haven't uh, done very many together. We were kind of hoping to do one every every week or every other week. Um, Chris and I get together and and just at least chat once a week to just touch base. Um, but it's been a while, and we thought we need to get something out so that you guys know we haven't completely just abandon the the idea of of making these videos so today we thought we'd talk just briefly about what it takes to make a good pr and the elements that kind of go into the basics of a really good pr for the mycroft community and so i think today instead of doing our like intro and all the rest of that um we're just going to jump right in and, and get right down into business and crank out a really quick video yeah yeah, so I think this is this is going to be some tips for how to make a good PR, and also if you're helping us out by reviewing PRs, what what to look for um, uh, in there. Because you know, Mycroft is a, a very large, um, well, fairly large open source community, uh, and we get a lot of we get a lot of contributions, um, many more than we can review ourselves. We're a pretty small team, um, and we, you know, we kind of have to stay focused on on things like the getting the Mark II out. So um, often, you know, we get we get a lot of contributions that are really cool features, um, but not necessarily essential features. Uh, so uh, the more that the community can help us review those as well, the quicker we can get them in there and, and get more features out for everyone. So um, this is intended to, to help out on that front as well. And with that, let's get right to it. Here we've got a PR from Forceland or OK. Um, uh, it's got the, the title is obviously fix remote settings over at startup. So you may not really understand the contents of this, but, but that's not what we're really interested in. Um, we just want to use this as an example. So whether you're making a PR or reviewing it, um, you, you want to make sure that first and foremost, the code that you're submitting is going into the right branch. It's going to the right place. So you'll see directly under the heading, um, we've got Forceland wants to merge one commit into Mycroft AI colon dev. So that's the place where the code is going to. Uh, so it's going into the Mycroft repository onto the dev branch from Forceland's repository uh, from the feature remote startup on change branch. So um, one of the one of the things that we uh, that, that causes a few problems is if people try and say uh, push a, a, a change directly to our master branch, for example, or maybe it's going to some other feature branch. Um, it should go to dev by default um, unless you change it. But if, if it is wrong, then a whole bunch of the automated things uh, are just not going to work because, you know, it's, it's looking at two different code bases and saying, okay, you know, can this cleanly merge into this other one? Uh, if not, then you know, it'll throw some errors at you and stuff. Um, uh, and also when it runs the tests on your code, it's going to run it based on if this code was merged into this branch, these are the tests that we'd run and and this is the outcome of those tests. So so that's, it's a very critical one. Um, so anytime you're reviewing a PR, just, just have a quick glance at that and make sure that's right before you spend any time anywhere else. Um, Cool. Uh, you'll see on the right, you, you know, we've got a few labels. Some of those are automatically applied. Some of them, uh, some of them, um, we add ourselves. Um, uh, you know, you, you'll kind of learn about that as you go. Um, but most of the time, we'll, we'll handle that stuff for you. Uh, and then I think the second thing that you really want to look at is is the checks. So before we bother reviewing code. Um, a lot of the time, it's it's good to see whether the tests are passing or not, um, and whether you know there's, there's a few different checks that happen. So if we head all the way to the bottom of the screen, uh, we will see that there's some some red and some green. Uh, so the the main red there is that the code hasn't been reviewed yet. So that's expected because we we haven't reviewed it. Uh, but the the thing that we do want to check is that all of the checks have passed. So in this repository, there are three 
separate um, checks. And if you click show all checks on the right, um, we'll, we'll see that you know there's a few different things that are going, going on there. Um, so we won't go into to detail about what they are because they're going to differ from diff for different projects, for different repositories. But um, you know, it's most likely that the the code builds correctly. Um, that any unit or integration tests uh, are running and passing properly. Um, you know, there, there could be some other things in there. Um, uh, so that's that's what they're about. So if they're not passing, then that, that's then your call to make about is this is this PR that you, that you want to review right now. Um, so if they're not passing, it, it's probably something that the author needs to go and and have a look at and fix up. If they're struggling and they don't understand why it's failing, then that's when we can go in and have a look and and try and provide a bit of guidance uh, to them. But but generally, if the tests aren't passing, if the checks aren't passing, that's um that's probably something that the author, the code author, needs to to have a look at. Um, and so this saves us a lot of time. You know, we don't want to bother reviewing a whole bunch of code that are being told by the system doesn't work. So, um, so you know, we want to save our time. We want you guys to save your time as well. So, cool. Does that make sense so far? Yep. Sweet. Um, what are we moving on to? So then, um, once we've we've made sure that those basic things are in place, uh, we'll we'll start to look at the details of the PR itself. Um, so Mycroft has uh, a, a template that people need to fill out when they're creating a PR. That can differ from from different repositories, but then we have a, a sort of global default as well. Uh, but, but primarily, it, it has to include an, uh, a description that does a brief overview of, of what the change is and why it's being made. Um, we include how to test it. So because you wrote the code, um, or because you know, whoever wrote the code should know how to verify that it works or not. Um, preferably, that's going to be in the form of an integration test or a unit test or something of that nature. But it might also include, you know, say this thing to my, you know, run Mycroft and say this thing, and it should do something different. Or in this case, you know, uh, ensure that the skill updates actually work properly. Um, Edit, edit something locally because this is this is about not um, forcing updates from from remote onto a local system. You know, edit edit the settings locally and make sure that that they don't get overridden. So, just trying to provide nice, clear instructions for a reviewer on on how to make sure that this change is really really working because it probably seems very obvious when you're when you're the one making the PR because you, you understand exactly what the what the problem was, what your solution is, um, but that's not always as clear for, for people when they're reviewing. So um, uh, we try and encourage people to do that as much as possible. Well, it also makes um, your anyway. job easier, right? Like if you don't have to spend time kind of deciphering what it is you have to do, like even if the description is bang on, it may not be immediately obvious what it is that that you need to do to make sure that this works properly. So if you can get almost kind of a cut and paste instruction, it makes it way easier to take a half hour to review a pull request that has good tests and you can push it down the pipe mm -hmm. as opposed to something like you look it up and you think, well, it might even take me an hour and a half or two hours just to just to go through to figure out what it is that I need to do to make sure this works properly, you're less likely to take that that addition on to the, to your day, and so that pull request will probably sit. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, like if you're making a pull request, making it as easy as possible for reviewers to to do their job means that they're going to be more likely to review your PR. Um, and you know, as you said, like. I'm sure that given a little bit of time, you can figure out, okay, they made this change, so I should do this thing to, to make sure that that's still working. And and as a reviewer, you do need to try and think about some edge cases and things like that. But but yeah, if you can if you can provide some really straightforward 
you know, run this command uh, instructions, then uh, it makes it a lot easier and you'll get a reputation for having easy to review commits, yeah. um, uh, which, you know, means that people are more likely to, to, you know, just grab one while they're, you know, between jobs or, you know, if they've got an hour in the evening, they might, you know, they might look at a few PRs and say, well, I'm pretty sure that, that, you know, that person does good, good, um, descriptions and good test instructions. So I'm, I'm sure that I'll have time to sort of have a poke at that one, but I'm, I'm less sure about these other ones. So. Yeah. And case in point, when we were trying to decide on a good pull request to do this video for, um, we looked at the, the reviewers and, and the authors and said, oh, well, Forslund almost always does really good PRs. And so we actually kind of, out of the hundreds that we could have chosen from, we kind of narrowed it down to which ones of his are kind of active right now. Um, because we knew yeah. that, because we knew that he follows the process through and makes it easy for the reviewers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah. Uh, and if, if someone hasn't got the detailed information in there and you're, you're looking to review it, then feel free to push back on them and say, how do I test this? You know, what, what is your recommendation for me testing this or your description? I'm not quite clear from your description, what the problem that you're trying to solve is, or, um, what your intended solution is or why this is really a problem or, you know, whatever, like definitely ask questions. Um, and if, if it's your PR and people are asking questions, then, uh, it's because they, they want to get your change merged in. So, you know, try and be helpful and, uh, you know, no one's asking questions just for the sake of commenting, you know, there's, there's no gamification. There's no point system for how many comments you can make or anything like that. It's just, we're all trying to help each other out. So, um, so the more that we can help each other do that, uh, the quicker we can get things merged and the better, better micro becomes for everyone. So, um, do you want to talk a little bit about good descriptions? Yeah. So for a good description, oftentimes it, it needs to be right to the point. And you have to strike that balance between providing a wall of text and not providing enough description. Uh, so generally speaking, you try to do what, uh, what Forslund has done here, where he provides some context as to what's happening. Like he talks about what the current functionality is actually doing and then why this PR is needed and what it does to kind of address that issue. And, and that's really important because when you go through, if, if you give a high level overview of what the PR is attempting to do to rectify the, the situation, when you review the commits, you can actually view it through the lens of what the person was trying to achieve, right? If you just simply review what they did without what they were trying to achieve, you might not get, let's say, the best code for the job. And I, I see this a lot in when I deal with clients for work. The client will come to me and say, I want a solution that does X, but they won't actually tell you what they're trying to solve. And so if you mm. just blindly go down the path of trying to um, work off of some specific thing, you'll find that the solution you come up with is not the solution they ultimately wanted. It's just what they thought they wanted. And it's the same thing in this case. If you don't have a good description, uh, yeah. the solution that comes in may look like it fits, but it might not actually be what you're trying to do, or at least it may not be the optimal route for the approach that you're trying to take. And so a good description helps everybody. It helps you kind of cement the thoughts that you, that you have and maybe even, and I've had this, when I write a description, I go back and make an additional commit before I submit it because I realized that um, I, I was missing something or something clicked and I had mm -hmm. a better way. And so a good description helps you, it helps the pull request, and it helps form an idea of what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you're not, if you don't have that why, often you'll get the question of like, well, why didn't you just do blah? Because, you know, the person is thinking, oh, well, if you're only trying to do this little thing, 
which is what they, you know, based on your PR title or something like that, um, you know, it, it won't be clear as to why you needed to make all these other changes and, and all that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, again, it just helps, helps everyone get on the same page um, and helps the review process go much quicker. Um, the other thing is, you know, like commits, th this becomes part of the history of the project. And so when people are looking back mm -hmm. and they say, they look, they go, you know, why, why is this code the way that it is? They can go back and look at the, um, the pull request and, and see all that detail. And that might be in a week. It might be in five years time. Like, who knows? Yep. Um, cool. So then the next, the final bit, uh, that we want to look at, um, is the commit history. I think, I think I find it good to just have a, a brief look at the commit history. Um, this one is obviously really simple. Uh, it's all in, it's, it's a fairly straightforward change. So it's all in one commit. Um, uh, and you can see that we've got a really nice commit message there that has some, some good detail. Um, so, so I'd feel pretty confident about reviewing this code. Um, when you, when you get in there and, and there's, you know, 27 commits and, and they're all, uh, edit, edit.py, uh, you know, yeah. typo fix, typo fix, typo fix, typo fix. It's like, oh man, this one, this one might be a bit painful. So, uh, but there's not a reason not to review it. Uh, it just might, it just might be something that you provide a bit of feedback on to the, um, to the code author as well. Um, and we can, we do have the ability to, to squash commits, um, when we're merging them, but we'll, we'll get into that later. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's about it. Like, you know, from the, from when you're first jumping in to have a look at a PR, um, the things that you want to the things that you want to really take note of first before you, you know, dedicate some time to actually reviewing the code, uh, which I think will save us all a lot of time and, and mean that we, we get the best commits merged uh, more quickly. Um, so in, in this video, this, this was kind of a, a, a short, quick and easy, uh, what makes a good PR and, and really it boils down to, Make sure that you have a good description about what you're doing, why you're doing it, and possibly how you're doing it. And that leads into making mm -hmm. sure that you have a good how do I test section. Uh, we also talked a little bit about making sure that the automated tests are passing if there are actual automated tests in the branch. Um, and mm -hmm. aside from that, try to make sure that your commit messages are good, that you don't have a lot of duplicates where you know, I think the example was used, fix a typo. Like if you just have seven commits saying fix a typo, um, maybe you should take some time to clean that up before you submit your PR. And that that's basically it. Yeah, so next time uh, I think we'll, we'll start getting into, uh, we'll start getting into what you should look for when you're actually reviewing the code itself. Um, so today we, we just looked at the PR and we'll, we'll get into the code. Um, provide some of the tips that, you know, things that we look out for, uh, as well as how to actually get the code onto your machine so that you can run it locally. Um, but that's about it for this one. So until next time. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have as long of a lag, although Christmas is coming up, so we might have another longish break between our next video. So. Hopefully we don't have, we don't make a, a long pattern of this. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Although with COVID, I'm, I'm just going to be uh, at my desk through Christmas. So who knows? <laughs> we'll see if we can squeak one or two in then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you like what we're talking about here, then, then make sure to um, hit the like button and it feels weird to say this sort of stuff, but hit the like button or like put a comment about, you know, thing, your own tips for reviewing PRs um, or any questions that you have that you've run into. Uh, and if you want to, if you want to help reviewing PRs at Mycroft, then, uh, then also, you know, do a comment or just jump into our GitHub and, uh, and there's, there's plenty to choose from. 
um, yeah. come join us on Micro Chat. Uh, there's plenty of friendly people that can point you in the right direction. So, yeah. Until next time. Until next time. Ciao. Bye.